What is the role of religion in our ever-changing world? From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Issues of Faith. Welcome to Issues of Faith. I am Ben Hall. Good show today. We are talking about the Pope's visit and specifically reaction to his speech in Congress. Very happy to have with us someone who was actually there in the gallery as the Pope spoke, Father Joseph Breen, retired priest from St. Edward's Catholic Church. Father Breen, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure. It's really great. It's great to have you back. Nice to be here. So you had the distinct honor of going up to Washington, D.C., being in the gallery. You were a, a guest of Congressman Cooper, right? Yes. I want to just get into all aspects of, of, of that experience. What was it like in the gallery, which is a very partisan, political sort of place, obviously, as the Pope spoke? Just kind of what was the atmosphere? I've been used to watching the State of the Union. That's the one time of the year they do have a joint you know, session of Congress. And uh, anybody would know would be uh, aware of the fact that whatever the president and whoever he was, either one side would stand up and clap, the other one would remain seated. The Democrats, I think, would be on the left, uh, facing the, the chair, the Republicans. But what was really nice in the very beginning of his talk, I forget the uh, the exact words, the f beginning, but he said, it is so nice to be in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Both sides, Democrat and Republican, stood up immediately, gave him a real nice round of applause. I was worried, I thought maybe some people would think the talk might be too political, one side or the other. But I was really impressed and grateful that what he spoke was the truth. And more than, you might say, political, more than just catering to one side or the other. He spoke most of the time in a way that men and women of goodwill could learn from what he was saying basically how to get along with people, how to treat others very well. And what it was challenging to the, uh, the politicians, the House of Representatives and the Senators, you have your differences. And that's what he made very strong. You have your differences, but work together, dialogue, and do what is good for the common good. There were you some couldn't dispute that. Right. There were some political themes to his speech. He, he talked about the death penalty and the need to abolish that, the sanctity of life, mentioned marriage, and also mentioned climate change. Uh, that makes some people uncomfortable, I think, when, when he gets into some of these political realms. My, I'm going to ask a couple questions about that. But first, what was the reaction in the chamber when some of those things came up? Did one side react differently than the other, the Democratic side act differently than the Republican side? Very few times. I think I read later that he was interrupted or responded to 35 times. And most of the time it was some of both sides or the majority of both sides. You know, uh, how can you speak to a group like that without, as you say, hitting some issues that are more popular with one party or or with the other. And I say that it's just like when you go to a speech, you can have your own views. You're going there to see if there's more wisdom, more understanding to your understanding, to be challenged to see things maybe not only differently, but with greater wisdom and knowledge. And so, I mean, something that is that important if he has additional reasons to support climate change, well, regardless of what my feelings are, I should be willing to listen and not disturb, but hopefully challenge to have a better understanding. You know, uh, I remember OSHA. Some years ago when I was much younger, there were fears that that would just cause all kinds of economic harm businesses couldn't uh, support it. 
And that was mainly to clean up the atmosphere and clean up rivers and water lands. And I remember some years ago, I had a wedding up in Buffalo. And the Sunday morning after the Saturday wedding, we went across to the Canadian side. And I remember there were people everywhere just happy and rejoicing. That lake that had been closed for fishing and swimming by several years. That was the first day that that lake was open once again for swimming and fishing. And what I'm saying is we get all especially worried and upset when something maybe is different. We're fearful. But uh, if it's for the good of everybody, at least listen. When he talks about climate change, that's one of the things, and, and so you've, you've heard criticism that he's a liberal pope um, and, and that maybe one side of the political spectrum could claim him more than another side or that he, he would lean more toward one side than another side. And, and generally, you hear it said, he's a liberal pope. He's, he would, he, he's speaking more to Democrats than Republicans is, is the insinuation there. When you hear that, what do you think? Do you think he's a liberal pope? Is he a democratic pope? I think he's a man that proclaims the truth. I really do. How he has such a great understanding of human nature, how he is so greatly committed to what we say the work of Jesus Christ. Reach out to those who are in great need, the poor, the rejects, those who you know, suffer great burdens. I mean, if you want to call that liberal, I just say it's the right thing to do. And uh, in his talk, he didn't really condemn or speak harshly of anyone that didn't agree with him. I think uh, either there or later on, he says, if you don't agree with me, and he, he says, if you don't believe, you're not a believer, that's fine. Let us pray for each other, you know, and let us be nice to each other and supportive. I was fearful that it would be too much political on what he was going to say, but I just think he proclaimed the truth of the Gospels, and he has a great, great understanding of human nature. You were fearful. Were you... Do you think it's a pope has never addressed Congress before? This has never happened before. You're First going into time. the most partisan world there is there in Congress, and so you you said you were worried. Should a, a pope be talking to Congress? In in your view, um, what what do you think about just the fact he wants to go and speak before this very political body with this message? Well, he was invited by the speaker. And uh, I learned that uh, along the way that uh, the speaker had invited uh, two previous popes to speak before Congress, but they refused. I've wondered maybe why those other two popes, were they maybe worried uh, that they would be too political, or how and what would they be able to say? Uh, I don't know why they didn't accept the invitation, but this pope did, and the way I see it is Republicans and Democrats listen to anybody that maybe has something to share with you that might be a greater manifestation of what is true, good, and, and holy. And uh, I think it's a, a mark of strength and humility to listen to anyone that maybe has something to say. You're not forced to agree, but you might get new insights. And, you know, this is just speculation. But uh, Bainet, you know, was rather emotional. Yes, you saw him tearing up doing many the times. Speech. And uh, when he said that for the good of the nation, come together and work together and dialogue and do what's right for the people. I think Bainet probably realized he 
would not be successful in doing that. And at 65, at his age, he's been under tremendous pressure within his own party. It's that great division between what is traditionally Republican moderates and then 40 or 50 Tea Party members that don't know how to compromise. They don't know how to dialogue and work together with the rest of the party. So he's been embarrassed. He's suffered greatly by being the speaker of such a a party that is so lacking in unity. Well, and what you're saying is the next day he announced he was not going to run for speaker mm -hmm. again. Now, did did you was was there any wind that that was going to happen when you were up there? I mean, you're obviously up there with Congressman Cooper, who's on the other side of the aisle, but was there some... It seems hard to believe that that just came about as a result of hearing the Pope speak. It's probably been in the works for a long time. Mm -hmm. But was there any indication that that big announcement was going to come directly no, after no, this? No, because everything, the emphasis was on the Pope. But uh, I found it uh, rather interesting and enjoyable that after the Pope's speech, uh, the congressman brought me back to his office and there was a reporter from the Tennessee to interview us. Uh, the congressman uh, Cooper was very praiseworthy of the speaker. Uh, he also was aware of how hard a job he has had. Right. It, how difficult, and he praised Bona uh, in a very highly complimentary fashion with sincerity that he had been a real good speaker, a good man, an honest man. All right, we have to take a break. Sure. Then I want to come back and I want to talk about the Pope's impact on the church. What, do you, what kind of reformer do you think he is and will be, and, and we'll just talk about that. So take a break. Be back right after this.